Hey everybody, it's Dr. David Jockers, and today we're talking about chronic viral infections. We're gonna go over some of the symptoms and natural solutions. And so when we look at a virus, we know that it is DNA or RNA particulate that doesn't have true living organism characteristics. Viruses are not considered living organisms. And so they're typically just this genetic material that's surrounded by some glycoprotein, protein, and lipids. They're 100 times smaller than bacteria, and we classify them as intracellular parasites. So you have things like worms, amoeba, certain bacteria that are pathogenic, um, those are considered parasites, but they're extracellular. So they live outside of the cell. They live in organ systems like the liver or the intestines, whereas viruses are intracellular. So they actually live within cells. That's where they do their damage. And so here's how a virus works. It gets into a cell and it releases its RNA. So that's genetic material that helps basically tell the cell what to do, what to create. And so it uses the host, it lives off of the host and the nutrients that are coming into the host and continues to create more and more RNA. And that RNA can impact the way that our cells genetic makeup and the way that our mitochondria and our organelles function. Okay. And then over time, the RNA can end up causing destruction of the cell. So it causes in a dysfunction in the cell. And here are some of the major viruses that we see out there. Herpes zoster virus, which is uh, also called shingles, right? Um, and also it's a you know, player in the chicken pox as well. Varicella zoster is true chicken pox uh, virus. You've got rhinovirus, which is kind of like, um, you know, your, your upper respiratory symptoms. You've got herpes virus, which can be sexually transmitted. Um, also, we can get it through like oral fecal content, uh, contact, like through our through feces and, and contaminated food. We have got cytomegalovirus, which is can be devastating, especially for young children. Um, so we have a whole, whole number, a whole host of these viruses. Epstein-Barr virus is a really common one that I see, especially with people that have autoimmune thyroid conditions. Oftentimes, it's the Epstein-Barr virus that's actually infecting the cells and the body's attacking the infected cells. And oftentimes they're in the thyroid gland. The Epstein-Barr has an affinity for the thyroid gland. So oftentimes the body attacks the thyroid because it's attacking these dysfunctional cells that are infected by the Epstein-Barr virus. So these are some of the major viruses. And then we have retroviruses, which uh, one example would be HIV. And a retrovirus is a little bit different in that it's mostly RNA and it has a enzyme called reverse transcriptase. And that reverse transcriptase allows it to insert a copy of its genome into the DNA of a host that it invades. So it actually gives its own DNA to the host. And there's a lot of different theories on this. Some people believe this helps us adapt, like there's actually a purpose to retroviruses. But I would say in general, we wanna keep you know overall viral activity under control. We wanna keep our immune system really, really strong. And we don't want to have excessive expression, obviously, of these viruses cause a lot of unwanted symptoms. And so here are the ways to reduce our viral load. Number one is we can eat an antiviral diet, which I'll talk about in a second. Fasting is actually a, a strategy that's been used, you know, since the beginning of mankind to help keep viral activity under control. Fasting can be amazing. And then there's specific antiviral supplements that you can take. So when we look at viruses, we know that lysine helps inhibit their reproduction, whereas arginine helps fuel it. So foods that are higher in the amino acid arginine, like tomatoes, wheat germ, Brussels sprouts, nuts, um, a lot of seeds, grapes, pumpkin seeds, uh, blackberries, chocolate, sugar, asparagus, these things we would want to reduce. And then we would want to consume more of the foods with lysine. That's going to be all of our meats, fish, eggs, grass-fed dairy products, um, certain things like avocados are higher in lysine, lower in arginine, uh, certain fruits and vegetables like kale, beets, and celery. So, you know, for a lot of people, they're seeing great benefits doing like a carnivore diet. And a carnivore diet, as you can see off of this, would be a lower arginine, higher lysine-based diet, which that can, can be a big player in inhibiting viral activity in the body. 
So that's powerful. Now let's talk about fasting. We know fasting stimulates autophagy, which is where the body basically breaks down damaged dysfunctional cells and dysfunctional cellular organelles. And so when it, when the body, when we start to fast, the body starts to look for the weaker cells, right? The cells that are more dysfunctional and starts breaking those down to take the component parts and use those for energy. So the body needs energy. So it wants to break down the damage, the mediocre dysfunctional cells and use those first. And of course, those are going to be the viral infected cells, for example. So it's going to break those down. So fasting is a great approach, whether it's like a daily intermittent fast, uh, maybe getting a weekly 24 to 40 hour fast where you go from like dinner, let's say dinner, lunch or dinner on Saturday to lunch or dinner on Sunday, or even extend it out to like lunch or dinner the following day. So you get a 40, 48 hour fast can be a powerful approach. And then once once or twice a year, doing a longer fast where you do something like a five to seven day fast, water fast, can be really powerful. You ramp up that autophagy, your body gets rid of these damaged dysfunctional cells, it can be so powerful. And then on a weekly basis, doing something like a 24 to 48 hour fast, and ideally can be really powerful if at the end of the fast, like before you break it, get a good workout in. Okay, so do some strength training, do some different exercise, and that could ramp up that autophagy and then go ahead and break your fast, have a protein shake or something like that um, afterwards. And that can be really powerful for helping on a weekly basis keep the autophagy mechanisms working well. And on a daily basis, if you know, outside of the 24 hour fast, you might do like a 16 or 18 hour fast and eat two meals a day. And this can be really powerful for keeping viral activity under control. And then of course, trying to stick with a lot of those high lysine rich foods. Now, if I go back to that chart, you know, there are certain foods that like, you know, I think eating some, some nuts from time to time, chocolate, Brussels sprouts, probably fine, asparagus. Okay. But if you do have, you know, if you know, you've got Epstein bar, you know, you've got major viral activity in your body or hypothyroidism, like a uh, Hashimoto's autoimmune th hypothyroidism which is commonly linked with Epstein-Barr, maybe a good idea to, to stray away from some of those or at least really minimize them and really focus on these foods here that are higher in lysine. So more avocados, more celery, um, you know, celery juice can be really powerful, more eggs, fish, meat, grass-fed dairy, like grass-fed butter, those can be really powerful. Okay, so try that out. Now let's talk about some supplements that are great. Uh, lymphatic detox. This is a fantastic supplement for reducing viral activity has things like different herbs, like, like uh, sheep sorrel, turkey, rhubarb, burdock, root, astragalus, graviola. So some of those like burdock and sheep sorrel and rhubarb, those are herbs that, um, Rene Calais used in something called the Essiac tea. And you can still find Essiac tea it was renowned for its ability to help prevent against cancer and help reduce cancer growth in the body. And a lot of people were using it to overcome cancer naturally. So it can be really powerful because viruses are one of the leading causes of cancer. So lymphatic detox really concentrates that. You can also look for teas that have things like sheep sorrel, burdock root in that. You can look for Essiac tea and drink that on a daily basis. Um, some other herbs that are in this astragalus, which is very powerful antiviral, also very good adaptogenic herb. So it helps us balance out our stress hormones, balance our blood sugar, helps improve sleep quality, graviola and slippery elm, really good for the gut, the liver, kidneys, um, and supporting our immune system. So great herbs in there. Then we've got immunocharge and immunocharge is vitamin C. Uh, which is powerful antiviral, one of the most well-studied antivirals. It also has olive leaf extract, another really powerful antiviral, and beta-glucan, which helps support our body's immune system. And a healthy immune system will keep viral activity under control. So we can live our whole lives with viruses as long as we keep them dormant. We can stay very, very healthy. So vitamin C, things like beta-glucan, which strengthen the immune system, really good for putting viruses back into dormancy. So that's a great supplement. And then we've got Virad Chem Binder, which is a bioactive carbon that works. Basically these things are 
hundred to a thousand times smaller than the cells of our body. And so they almost act like a magnet. So this one in particular is very good for helping uh, pull out radiation stress, different, different uh, chemical stressors, chemotherapy stress, um, different pesticides that may be in our system, as well as viruses and actually pulling them like a magnet out of cells and helping to remove them from the body. So typically I'll have people do this two to four caps a day, right? Like one cap twice a day, morning and evening for more of a mild case, for more of a, um, a, a more of a, a symptomatic case, two caps twice a day, morning and, and also in the evening. And doing that for, for roughly, you know, somewhere around two to four months can be extremely powerful for getting rid of these viruses. So using that and really using that, all of these things together, this is one, the last one is our bioactive carbon minerals. Minerals are really important. And this one, they're all led by fulvic and humic acid, these bioactive carbons. So they actually are able to be delivered directly into the cells. Um, and it really supports the deto detoxification pathways of the body. And you have certain minerals, like for example, magnesium, zinc, okay, molybdenum, which are really important for helping reduce viral activity. So this one's really important for that. And it also helps stimulate cellular energy production. And when you have a chronic viral infection, one of the major symptoms is, is extreme fatigue. Oftentimes you can have a lot of fatigue. Um, anxiety is another one, trouble sleeping. Uh, lethargy. These are symptoms and the bioactive carbon minerals really help support that. So what we did is put all of those things together in a pack. So I recommend following a antiviral diet, implementing the fasting, intermittent fasting strategies, and then also adding this, this supplement pack in the lymphatic detox, viroid chem binder, immunocharge. You can also do the lysine, especially if you're going to have some of the higher arginine rich foods, taking a lysine supplement can also help um, keep the viral activity under control when you do consume the arginine rich foods. So I recommend the L lysine here that we, that we have in the pack and then also the bioactive carbon minerals. So you can purchase this all as a pack discounted from our site. So if you're, if you're dealing with a chronic viral infection, I would highly recommend going through this process, doing at least two months on this. You know, if it's a process that's been going on for a long time, you might need a longer period of time, like three or four months. Okay, but at least minimum two months, 60 days, and then retest, retest, see what your thyroid antibodies look like, see what your um, white blood cells look like, how you're feeling. Um, you know, most people are telling me they're, no, they're feeling 50% improvements in their energy by taking this for 30 to 60 days. So um, you should notice that. So I would definitely go ahead and try it out. If you want to test more in-depth testing, you can actually run a comprehensive viral panel. We have that on my website under lab testing. We can also see, see signs off of routine blood work. For example, if your white blood cells are under five, that's a sign that you may have had a chronic infection. Okay. If it's like, like I just looked at one, a lady had 2.9, uh, white blood cells as opposed to five, right? Five to eight, which is the ideal range. That's a sign that something's suppressing her immune system. Then when I looked at the breakdown, I, I saw that her lymphocytes, which should normally be, be between 20 and 40, her lymphocytes were at 43. That's a sign of viral activity. So neutrophils will go up in response to candida, uh, inflammation, or bacterial infections, whereas your lymphocytes will jump up. Again, up would mean over 40 for the lymphocytes. For neutrophils, up would mean over 60. So for her, her neutrophils were 48. Her lymphocytes were 43. And then her monocytes should be under seven and her monocytes were at eight. And that's a sign when I see the monocytes and the lymphocytes up, most likely there's an Epstein-Barr, also called mononucleosis. And the reason why they call it mononucleosis is again, because the monocytes and the lymphocytes are elevated. So with this lady who is struggling with fatigue, um, you know, we're going to do a protocol like this, right? And so this will help clear out the virus and allow her cells to function significantly better and produce more cellular energy and she'll get her energy back, her life back, and it'll be, be pretty powerful. So anyways, there is testing that you can do. You can also reach out to my team. We do health coaching. So if you check out drjockers.com, look for the coaching tabs. We have Melissa and Danielle that are excellent and uh, they'll know how to help you manage any sort of viral activity 
and um, and really overcome that. So you can check that out. Check out the viral support pack. Check out the article also that goes with this video. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so you get all my latest trainings. So anyways, hopefully that was helpful. Would love to hear your questions, your comments in the section below. So we'll see you soon, guys. Be blessed, everybody. Bye-bye.